Michael Meehan is president and CEO of Squared Communications and a former chief of staff for Senator Maria Cantwell. Philip Stutz is a Republican strategist and the founder and CEO of Go Big Media. He's also the author of a new book just out today, Fire Them Now, um, which um, maybe the president would like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like to fire people a lot. Um, let me start with you, Philip. You are from Florida yep. and you have school aged children. Yeah. And so your thoughts about just what's happened in the last week and from a Republican strategy perspective, uh, from just the, not just the policy, but the political side of things, right. trying to follow the president's lead, is it going to go anywhere? Well, the, the president, in a way, I, it reminds me of Bill Clinton. He's triangulating right now, which is uh, he is bo boxing the NRA in in one respect, and then he's trying to box the Democrats in on another. And the fact is, is he's come out and said, let's talk about this. And look, it's an intellectually dishonest opinion to say it's all about guns. It's about the health care system. It is about our own federal government and the, the law enforcement that did not stop this guy for 20 complaints against him. He was diagnosed with mental illness. He still got the gun. The FBI I knew about him. They did nothing, and he is. And Trump is putting all of these options on the table. And I think it's 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 you know it's healthy. The question is, will the Democrats come to his side and meet in the middle, and will the NRA as well? Michael, do you think that there is the, the, um, the benefit of triangulating is that you get a discussion going, really, to try to see if you can actually get to the middle? There seems to be a shared. Uh, gun control agenda sort of forming. Bump stocks, people think that's easy. Background checks, actually a lot of people are, are okay with that and we'll see um, how opposition comes forward. And, but also this idea of mental health and in addition the president adds making schools harder targets rather than soft targets. What do you think the Democrats will do in response to his outreach? Well, I think you probably get some movement on the things, like you said, the, the bump stock part. I think there'll be some movement, like you saw Senator Rubio last night in that town hall say that, you know, he's a four, you know, A plus rating in the NRA for, for his entire career, says, upon further review, I'm gonna rethink some of my positions. So mm -hmm. there is a little bit of movement there. And some of these things are pretty simple. Like if you, if you gotta have B-16 to drive a car, you should be 21 to go buy an assault weapon, even if even when the handgun is at 18. So there, there are some reasonable places to get to. The question is, the Democrats will want to go further. Um, and there's 230 million guns in America. They're not going away. So we've got to figure out what to do to make sure people that don't get them that have mental illnesses. You mentioned the town hall last night where Senator Rubio, and we have some sound there in an exchange between him and a, a Florida student's father. If we could take a look at that. I'm saying that the problems that we're facing here today cannot be solved by gun laws alone. And I'm going to tell you what we've done already and what I hope we'll do moving were forward. Were guns the factor Absolutely. in the hunting of, of our kids? Of course they were. And here's it's what the, the weapon of choice. Do, Can Fred. you say that? Number one, Fred, I absolutely believe that in this country, if you are 18 years of age, you should not be able to buy a rifle, and I will support a law that takes that right away. Philip, so that exchange and, and, and lots of other uh, media looking at that whole um, event last night and Senator Rubio going into basically the lion's den, right. especially with the crowd. Yeah. Um, so some people think it was brave. Some people think he didn't look like he was strong enough. What do you think? Uh, I think he was absolutely strong enough. I mean, that's what we have to do. Like we have, to, whether it's Republicans going into hostile you know, territory and talk, having these discussions, that's where we get, that's where we start this thing. Mm -hmm. So, and look, I mean, really, if you think about it, the, the most powerful thing I saw yesterday was that father, Andrew Pollack, who mm -hmm. talked about how angry he was, but also that we needed to do something. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just about gun control, it was about all of these factors and we need mm -hmm. to do it now. And I thought that was the most powerful thing I saw yesterday. There might be another place for agreement and this hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but Michael, since I know you worked on Capitol Hill as well, that you will remember this. The Dickey Amendment, um, let me just tell you mm -hmm. what this is. This is that the CDC can't use money. We have a tweet from here, I think. Um, can't use money, it's a Washington Post uh, article thing, thank you, um, to advocate or promote gun control. While the amendment wasn't, ex doesn't explicitly ban research on gun violence, it has had a chilling ripple effect on federal agencies beyond the CDC and even on privately funded research across the country. But Michael, take a listen to what the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar, had to say. We believe we've got a very important mission with our work with serious mental illness as well as our ability to do research on the causes of violence and the causes behind tragedies like this. We're in the science business and the evidence generating business and, and so I will, I will have our agency certainly be working in this field as they do across the whole broad, the broad spectrum. And we're going to hold you to it and Mr. And Mr. Michael, that had been a very controversial issue for a long time and it looks like maybe it's going to get resolved. Well, I think what happens in Washington is
is a big tent pole, and if, if they're not allowed to look at a, 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 anything in particular, it puts a chilling effect on the rest of the people who do research in our country mm -hmm. and around because they the government does fund a lot, a lot of research. And so if, they, if this topic's moved off the table the way that it was with that amendment, it, may, it creates a problem. So this is actually, I, I find, to be a heartening thing. And Philip, I want to take you to listen to uh, Dana Lash last night. She mm -hmm. was also at the yeah. event. She's a spokeswoman for the NRA. Listen to her. I don't believe that this insane monster should have ever been able to obtain a firearm, ever. I do not think that he should have gotten his hands on any kind of weapon. That's number one. This individual was nuts. And Philip, earlier today, Wayne LaPierre tried to make the case that it was the NRA that wanted more background checks and they want to be able to keep guns out of the hands of these individuals. Do you think people will buy it? Well, whether they buy it or not, I don't know. But the truth of the matter is that if the FBI had just relayed the message to the Miami Bureau of the FBI, this guy would not, this whole incident would not have happened, this whole tragedy would not have happened. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. And I think that's the position they're trying to defend right now, which is, it, look, we may want more gun laws, but we have laws and we have restrictions in place and they weren't followed up on. And that's the problem sometimes with the federal government. It just isn't coordinated. It's too big. It's too big. Actually, um, there's somebody... Uh, somebody wrote about that today and I read an uh, op-ed about it and just that it's gotten so big Michael that you have somebody like President Trump not a typical politician he comes in he's has no political fear and what do you think about the strategy of opening up to the cameras big event uh, big events like the one last night and the one today where you can just speak your mind <laughs> to the president and he gets to tell us what's on his mind too no it's remarkable that uh, presidents go to what they're really good at right and so this president is really good at reality tv he, he has mm. he you're right he has no fear he puts he puts in heart sick and ch um, school children into mm. and there you have no idea what they're going to say and now right. you own everything that they say because they're sitting in your office mm -hmm. i mean I, I agree with you but then you have other presidents that are better at speeches better at tv better at radio right. this guy has totally figured out the social media world and I think these kids are going to figure this out they're going to come up with apps that are going to tell us when kids are having problems and we're going to figure this out and so we're not going to wait for the FBI to communi right. communicate from one bureau to another. That might be the solution then. That but might be the solution. On it. Yeah. I mean he did Absolutely. a good job yesterday. Very interesting. All right Michael Mann and Philip Sutz thank you thank so much. Thank you.